Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm going to do today's Harry Potter reading. Um, when we read yesterday, um, Harry had met a family of redheads, and there was a kid named Ron, and Ron's mom helped him get onto platforms, um, nine and, platform nine and three quarters. Remember, there was no platform there for him to get on a train, so he didn't even know where to go, and uh, Ron's mom helped him get onto that. Um, they're going to be big parts of the story now, so... Okay, well, we're going to start reading now, and we're going to see what happens when he gets to Hogwarts, which is the school for wizards and witches. Here we go. Anyone sitting there? Um, the youngest redhead asked, pointing at the seat opposite Harry. Everywhere else is full. Harry shook his head, and the boy sat down. He glanced at Harry and then pretended to look out the window, pretending he hadn't looked. Harry saw he still had a black mark on his nose. Hey, Ron. The twins were back. Listen, we're going down the middle of the train. Lee Jordan's got a giant tarantula down there. Right, mumbled Ron. Harry, said the other twin. Did we introduce ourselves? Fred and George Weasley. And this is Ron, our brother. See you later, then. Bye, said Harry and Ron. The twins slid the compartment door shut behind them. Are you really Harry Potter? Ron blurted out. Harry nodded. Oh, well, I... Th Thought it might be one of Fred and George's jokes, said Ron. And have you really got, you know? He pointed at Harry's forehead. Harry pulled back his bangs to show the lightning scar. Ron stared. So that's where you know who? Yes, said Harry, but I can't remember it. Nothing, said Ron eagerly. Well, I remember a lot of green light, but nothing else. Wow, said Ron. He sat down and stared at Harry for a few minutes as though he suddenly realized what he was doing. He quickly looked out the window again. Miss Helt's still having problems with her asthma and her allergies, so it's kind of hard to breathe a little bit. So if you guys hear me breathing hard, it's that's what it's from. Okay. I'm okay, I promise. Are all of your family wizards, said Harry, who found Ron just as interesting as Ron found him? Er, yes, I think so, said Ron. I think mum has got a second cousin who's a, an accountant, but we never talk about him. So you must know loads of magic already. The Weasleys were clearly one of those old wizarding families the pale boy in Diagon Alley had been talking about. I heard you went to live with muggles, said Ron. What were they like? Horrible. Well, not all of them. My aunt and uncle and cousin are, though. I wish I had three wizard brothers. Five, said Ron. For some reason he was looking gloomy. I'm the sixth in our family to go to Hogwarts. You could say I've got a lot to live up to. Bill and Charlie have already left. Bill was head boy, and Charlie was captain of Quidditch. Mama. Hi, buddy. Hey. Now Percy's a prefect. Hulk? I'm not going to be Hulk on, ca on camera. Look, Mama's reading to her kids. Is that okay? You go play, and then we'll play Hulk afterwards, okay? Everyone expects me to do as well as others, but if I do, it's no big deal, because they did it first. You never get anything new either with five brothers. I've got Bill's old robes, Charlie's old wand, and Percy's old rat. Ron reached inside his jacket and pulled out a fat gray rat, which was asleep. His name's Scabbers, and he's useless. He hardly ever wakes up. Percy got an owl from my dad for being made a prefect, but they couldn't af I mean, I got Scabbers instead. Ron's ears went pink. He was going to say they couldn't afford it. He seemed to think he'd said too much because he went back to staring out the window. Harry didn't think there was anything wrong with not being able to afford an owl. After all, he'd never had any money in his life until a month ago, and he told Ron so, all about having to wear Dudley's old clothes and never getting proper birthday presents. This seemed to cheer Ron up a little. And until Hagrid told me, I didn't even know about being a wizard or about my parents or Voldemort. Ron gasped. What? said Harry. You said you know whose name, said Ron, sounding, sounding both shocked and impressed. I'd have thought you of all people... I'm not trying to be brave or anything, said Harry, just saying the name. I just never knew you shouldn't. You see what I mean? I've got lots to learn. I bet, he added. I bet I'm the worst in the class. You won't be. There's loads of people who come from muggle families, and they learn quick enough. While they were talking, the train had carried them out of London, and now they were speeding past fields full of cows and sheep. They were quiet for a time, watching the fields and the lanes flicker past. Around half past twelve, there was a great clatter outside the corridor, and a smiling, dimpling woman slid the door back and said, Anything off the cart, my dears? 
Harry, who hadn't had any breakfast, leapt to his feet, but Ron's ears went pink again, and he muttered that he brought sandwiches. Harry went out into the corridor. He'd never had any money for candy with the Dursleys, and now that he had pockets rattling with gold and silver, he was ready to buy as many as, as, Mar as many Mars bars as he could carry. But the woman didn't have Mars bars. What she did have were Bertie Bott's Every Flavor Beans, Dribble's Best Blowing Gum, Chocolate Frogs, Pumpkin Pasties, Cauldron Cakes, Licorice Wands, and a number of other strange things that Harry had never seen in his life. He got some of everything and paid the woman eleven silver sickles and seven bronze nukes. Ron stared at Harry as he brought it all back in the compartment, in the, into the compartment and tipped it onto the empty seat. Hungry, are you? Starving, said Harry, taking a large bite out of her pumpkin pasty. Ron had taken out a lump of package and unwrapped it. There were four sandwiches inside. He pulled one of them apart and said, She always forgets I don't like corned beef. Swap you for one of these, said Harry, holding up a pasty. Go on. You don't want this. It's all dry, said Ron. She hasn't got much of much time, he added, you know, with five of us. Go on, have a pasty, said Harry, who had never had anything to share before or anyone to share it with. It was a nice feeling, sitting there with Ron and eating their way through Harry's pasties, cakes, and candies. The sandwiches lay forgotten. What are these, Harry asked Ron, holding up a pack of chocolate frogs. They're not really frogs, are they? He was starting to feel that nothing would surprise him. No, said Ron, but see what the card is. I'm missing Agrippa. What? Oh, of course, you wouldn't know. Chocolate frogs have cards inside of them, you know, to collect. Famous witchers, witches and wizards. I've got about 500, but I haven't got Agrippa or Ptolemy. Harry unwrapped his chocolate frog and picked up the card. It showed a man's face. He wore a half moon, half moon glasses, had a long crooked nose, and flowing silver hair, a beard, and mustache. Underneath the picture was the name Albus Dumbledore. So this is Dumbledore, said Harry. Don't tell me you've never heard of Dumbledore, said Ron. Can I have a frog? I might get Agrippa. Thanks. Harry turned his card and read, Dumbledore, current headmaster of Hogwarts. Considered by many, uh, many the greatest wizard of modern times, Dumbledore is particularly famous for his defeat of the dark wizard Grindelwald in 1945, for the discovery of the twelve uses of dragon's blood, and for his work on alchemy with his pa partner, Nicholas Flamel. Professor Dumbledore enjoy enjoys chamber music and ten-pin bowling. Doesn't sound very fun, does he? Harry turned the card back over and saw to his astonishment that Dumbledore's face had disappeared. He's gone! Well, you can't expect him to hang around there all day, said Ron. He'll be back. No, I've got Morgana again, and I've got about six of her. Do you want it? You could start collecting. Ron's eyes strayed to the pile of chocolate frogs waiting to be unwrapped. Help yourself, said Harry. But in, you know, the muggle world, people just stay put in photos. Do they? They don't move at all? Ron sounded amazed. Weird. Harry stared at Dumbledore as Dumbledore cycled back into the picture and gave him a small smile. Ron was looking more interested in eating the frogs than looking at the famous wizard and witch's cards, but Harry couldn't keep his eyes off of them. Soon he had Dumbledore and Morgana and Hengist of Woodcroft, Alberic Grenion, Circe, Paraseclus, and Merlin. He finally tore his eyes away from the Druidus Cleodna, he was scratching her nose to open a bag of Bertie Bott's Every Flavor Bean. You want to be careful with those, Ron warned Harry. When they say every flavor, they mean every flavor. You know, you get the ordinary ones like chocolate and peppermint and marmalade. And then you get spinach and liver and tripe. George reckons he had a booger flavored once. Ron picked up a green colored bean looking at it carefully and bit into the corner. Bleh, see sprouts. They had a good time eating every flavor beans. Harry got toast, coconut, baked beans, strawberry, curry, grass, coffee, sardine, which was, and was even brave enough to nibble the end of a funny gray one Ron couldn't touch, which turned out to be pepper. The countryside now was flying past the windows was becoming wilder. The neat fields had gone. Now there were woods, twisting rivers, and dark green hills. There was a knock on the door of their compartment and a round voice, and the round-faced boy, Harry, had passed on flat pa platform nine and three quarters came in. He looked tearful. Do you know what tearful means? Tearful means that he looks like he's been crying. He's a little sad. Did you guys see Kai sneaking past there? I saw Kai go through there. Oh, I just saw him go past again. 
Sorry, but have you guys seen a toad at all? When they shook their heads, he wailed, I've lost him. He keeps getting away from me. He'll turn up, said Harry. Yes, said the boy miserably. Well, if you see him. He left. I don't know why he's so bothered, said Ron. If I'd brought a toad, I'd lose, a, lose it as quick as I could. Mind you, I bought scab, brought scabbards, so I can't talk. Nice. Thank you for the reading glasses, buddy. Um, the rat was still snoozing on Ron's lap. Kai hasn't even taken his PJs off yet, have you, Kai? You say hi, everybody. Hi. Can you wave? Wave. Okay, now go play, little boy. Go play. play. Go turn your show back on. It's, it's off. I can hear it. Huh? It's off. I can. I can't hear it. He rummaged around in his trunk. Oh, sorry. He might have died and you wouldn't have known the difference, said Ron. I tried to turn him yellow yesterday to make him more interesting, but the spell didn't work. I'll show you. Look. He rummaged around in his trunk and pulled out a very battered-looking wand. It was chipped in places and something white was glinting at the end. Unicorn hair was nearly poking out. Anyway, he'd just raised his wand when the compartment boy slid door slid open again. The toadless boy was back, but this time he had a girl with him. She was already wearing her new Hogwarts robes. Has anyone seen a toad? Neville's lost one, she said. She had a bossy sort of voice, lots of bushy brown hair, and rather large front teeth. We've already told him we we haven't seen it, said Ron, but the girl wasn't listening. Oh, are you doing magic? Let's see it then. She sat down. Ron looked taken aback. Can you have it? Uh, Can you have it? All right. No, go pick that up. Please. It's not a toy, buddy. Please. Go turn your show back on. He cleared his throat. Sunshine daisies, butter mellow. Turn this stupid fat rat yellow. He waved his wand, but nothing happened. Scabber stayed gray and fast asleep. Are you sure that's a real spell, said the girl? Well, it's not very good. I've tried a few simple spells just for practice, and it's all worked for me. Nobody in my family's magic at all. It was ever a surprise when I got my letter. But I was ever so pleased, of course. I mean, it's the very best school of witchcraft there is, I've heard. I've learned all our books by heart, of course. I just hoped it would be enough. I'm Hermione Granger, by the way. Who are you? She said this all so fast. I'll be right back, you guys. Kylo thinks he needs to play with a Sharpie. Actually, let's go ahead and stop there for today. So tomorrow, when we read, we'll get to see Harry going to Hogwarts. We're going to see what happens. See you guys then.